Did you know that we have channel memberships now? If you'd like to help support this channel, get some exclusive Koobana emotes to use in the comments, as well as an exclusive badge by your name, click that join button now to find out more. Every bit of support really helps. Thanks guys. In the 1800s, mainland Japan began to colonize Hokkaido, home of the native Ainu people, and particularly towards the end of the 1800s, made a push to begin modernizing and cultivating the area to the mainland's expectations. And in 1872, an event that came to be known as the Goyo Fire took place, burning down almost every thatched hut that existed in the burgeoning Sapporo area. But what made this more surprising was that the fire, as the name suggests, was officially sanctioned. Why would the government try to burn down the area they were cultivating? Let's take a look. Goyo, in this case, means something that is officially sanctioned by the government. To understand how this fire came about, and why it was the government that started it, we need to go a little further back. In 1870 and 1871, greater efforts were being made to bring citizens from mainland Japan up to Hokkaido to help modernize and cultivate the area. It was only a few short years earlier that Sapporo village was established by the government and designated as the administrative center of Hokkaido after determining that the previous center, Hakodate, was a poor location for defense. In 1871, Iwamura Michitoshi, head of the Hokkaido Development Commission, decided on a genius plan. In order to bring people north to the cold, cold plains of Sapporo, he would offer them a great sum of money to move and build a new home. 100 yen, to be exact, which at the time was a tremendous amount of money. The catch was that only married couples could apply for the money, and they would have to build a proper house able to withstand the cold of Hokkaido winters with it. However, with those being the only stipulations and a tremendous amount of free money on the line, well, it didn't take long for people to learn how to game the system. And gaming the system, it seemed, was quite easy. Checks were in place to, in theory, prevent people from abusing the system, but these checks weren't very good, nor were they carried out very well. To start with, couples were never officially vetted as actually being married or not. An interesting bridal hire business began, where men could simply hire a woman for as little as 2 yen to pretend to be their wife in order to get the 100 yen the government was offering. The money on offer was apparently so good that the Hokkaido Development Commission reportedly received 250 applications in just six months. Remember, this meant being a married couple who wanted to permanently uproot their entire life to move to the then cold wilds of Hokkaido, a type of lifestyle most were not accustomed to. But here's where the second part of the con comes in. While the money was supposed to be used to build a home, thereby helping to cultivate the land and build a city, few actually did this. Instead, they built cheap thatched huts and used the rest of the money on whatever else they wanted. But couldn't the government just check to ensure that actual houses were being built, and if not, take back their money? Well, yes. But the settlers had an answer for that as well. Another small industry popped up where these men who received the 100 yen loans, in essence, rented a home to confuse officials into thinking the real thing had been built. Inspections were carried out once houses were built with the 100 yen the government granted, but settlers were able to get around this by renting a cheap model house that was quickly constructed for inspection and then just as quickly torn down once inspection was over. Kind of like a prefab house that was built and then torn down over and over leaving government officials none the wiser that, once they left, that house wouldn't be around for much longer either. Of course, this type of con couldn't last forever. The local government would soon realise there weren't that many houses in the city they were trying to build, 
And indeed, they did notice. Instead of the sturdy, winter-ready houses they expected to see, all they found were thatched huts that most definitely wouldn't keep the Hokkaido winters out, and could very easily catch fire from a stray flame. A very big problem not just in winter, but in the dry springs as well. They had been duped, and somehow, they had to fix the problem. And so, Iwamura came up with a solution. He summoned officials from the Sapporo main office on May 2nd, 1872, and sat them down to discuss the problem. The reason the people do not listen to us, he said, is because we also have thatched huts. Therefore, tomorrow I will burn our huts to set an example. Yes, Iwamura's solution to the problem was to set fire to the government's own thatched huts and hope that it set an example for the other settlers to follow. The following day, May 3rd, Iwamura set out and did just what he said he would. Accompanied by students, officials, and the head carpenter in charge of developing Sapporo at the time, he set fire to the government's thatched huts and lumber depot. The head carpenter, Nakagawa Genzaemon II, was there to help prevent the spread of the fire, and he, alongside many of the almost 1,000 carpenters who moved to Hokkaido, became the foundation of what would later become the Sapporo Fire Department. Officially, the fire never spread. Officially. There is nothing recorded in the official records of the fire, and in a book Iwamura later released, he also claimed that not a single house was destroyed by the fire, he said. He also claimed that it was the people who called this fire the Goyo, or official government fire. But the statements of those who were there at the time say otherwise. According to Nakayama Kyuzo, one of the farming pioneers in Sapporo at the time, it was Iwamura himself who erected an eight-foot-high banner, stating, Goyo fire. But far more damningly, according to Nakagawa, the head carpenter with Iwamura at the time, his claims that no houses were destroyed in the fire were also false. After the fire was lit, an eastern wind blew in and spread the fire towards several fields in the west. Being early spring, much of the area was dry and quickly caught fire. In Nakagawa's own words, all the grass huts in Sapporo were burnt to the ground. It's unknown how many houses were lost that day, but reportedly only three thatched huts remained standing by the time the fire was done. That of the ferryman, who was said to be the first Japanese resident of Sapporo. A kashizashiki, a tatami mat room that can be rented out for meetings, etc. And the main building of Higashi Honganji Temple. Eyewitness reports told of Iwamura leading labourers from one hut to the next and pouring oil on them to help them burn better. And it was these three establishments only, due to ties with the government, that were able to avoid burning down. Either way, the area that was burnt down after the Goyo fire was then cleared and non-thatched housing, like the government wanted, was built in its place. Development of the land continued, and nobody ever paid for the fire that burnt down everybody's homes. Because officially, no homes were ever burnt down. But what did you guys think of this one? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time.